Welcome everyone to my review of Ark Nova. This is a game for one to four players which must build and maintain your very own zoo. This game combines card drafting, resource management and action card selection mechanics. I want to talk first about hype and my hype for this game initially was super high. I was looking for this game for a long time, it was out of stock, it was climbing the board game key charts very very high and every single review thought it was positive. So for me, I set my bar really really high for this game. When I finally got it, I was kind of worried. I had a bit of doubt sink in, thinking, would the game meet my expectations? Because I set my bar so, so high for this game. Luckily, not only did the game meet my expectations, it exceeded them. It went beyond as good as the game could be. I thought, okay, a game about building the zoo, it's from the same makers of Guide Project and Terra Mystica. Play quite complex, you know, a bit of a whack of wingspan, Terra Foy Mars, hybrid kind of game going on here. Is it that good, though? And uh, even, after, even after the first game, after the first game alone, I was hooked. I loved it. I couldn't get out. I couldn't get enough. I wanted to play again. And that for me was a good, good first sign. So before I get into the game review, let's look at the mechanics of the game and how the game is played. So here we have a game of Art Nova for a solo player. Up here is the main board. Now there are a few more sections up here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six in the main deck of cards. There's a few tracks on here as well. We've got three markers. One on the appeal, one on reputation, and one on conservation. The start on 20 appeal for a solo game. If we want a harder game, we'll start on 10 or even harder still, start on zero. As we increase our appeal, play animals, especially the bigger, more rare animals. As you can see here, the elephant will give us eight appeal because it's a big animal. Whereas something like the yellow throated Martin only gives a three appeal, smaller animal. Not quite as exciting, it's a little bit harsh. I mean, I like this animal, but obviously you're going to get more appeal from getting playing an elephant than a small animal. So you play an animal, this will go up. And the number here, here is the income number. So when you make a break action, trigger the sort of break um, income part of the game, you'll gain income based on what number you're at. So see here we have 17. So if we did a break action now, we gain 17. If we were up here, say so it's 100 appeal, the number there is 35 above it. The conservation track along here, we can increase this by certain card abilities and doing conservation tasks on this board down here. This will go along. When we hit a certain point here, we'll get new abilities. So these two are always the same, and these two are randomized face down bonus tokens. We get shuffled up, place on there. So you see, when we hit number two, we get to basically upgrade a card, gain a new worker. And when we hit five, we can basically gain 10 resources, five resources, or two a reputation, and so forth and so forth. The game is ended when these two. Uh, markers pass each other. So, say for the game, my conservation's at say 10, and my appeal's at 90, and then at one point I play something, I see my appeal goes past, or I play something, and this goes past. The game end is triggered, in one last turn, and we do end game scoring. Reputation can be increased in a lot of ways, much like conservation. And this allows us not only gain new abilities, as you can see along there, we have a few icons, we have an upgrade bonus card icon there, and gain new worker there, and some more across to the side. But also, when we want to gain cards based on reputation range, we can gain more cards. So, the more reputation range we have along here, the more cards we can gain. So, currently number one, we can only gain the Asian Elephant card. We can still play cards from our hand and still gain cards in other ways, but the more advanced we are on this track, the more cards we have, the more options we are towards. This track up here is the break track. Now, we're not using a break token, so I'm playing solo, but in most play games, you put a break token here. Every time you do a break action on the cards down here, move token along. When it hits this point here, you trigger a break. Basically, there is a sort of like end of end of turn, end of round, or pausing moments. Basically, when you play that, when that mark hits there, you trigger a break action. And you do certain things, and like I said before, all the symbols are listed nice and clear along here, and you go in order. So, first of all, first one to get there gets an extra token, an extra point token. You can draw up to your hand size, or five, you've got the card for that. Get rid of all your uh, Venom tokens, multiply tokens, return uh, tokens back to the association board. Discard the first two cards in this, much like a wingspan from the sort of bird for you, discarding and gone. And then trigger your income, so income on your board, cards, uh, kiosk, sponsorship cards, and any abilities at the side over here. And then finally, set the break marker and go again. So, you see there's a lot of symbols up there, and all symbols mean certain things. We'll go through those symbols later on. Just to the left of the board, we have the end game scoring cards. We get two of these, so that's the game. And at one point, when we hit 10 on this track, we pick one. So I have two here. I have favourite zoo and sponsored zoo. See here, this one here will give me conservation, reputation of your zoo. So at the end of the game, the higher my reputation is, the more of this I will get, conservation. And this one, 
We're getting more conservation based on sponsor cars I have in my zoo. So the more sponsor cars I play, the more I gain. So underneath that is a conservation card. So we have three of these randomly. You get more for more players and you can play more throughout the game. We have three down here next to the board. And you can do these later on in certain tasks with what symbols you have. And doing these will unlock more conservation points for you up there. This is a solo board. So every time we do a turn, do an action, move this across. When all sits are across, we trigger a break. Symbols there for a shortcut for you. Take a cube, place it on the leftmost space of this to basically block it off. And then do a break action for us and then start again. These will go gradually more and more and more. When there's only two left, basically six rounds, the game is over. Check our score. If we've gone past our uh, conservation marker, we've won. So this is our zoo down here, our little zoo. So we have a few things here. This is our map first, our layout. What's great here is there are four, basically there's eight maps. There's four map zeros where well, they're all the same. No ability, just a basic map. But on the back of the four of these maps, there's individual maps with different layouts and special abilities too. So this is the basic beginner side. So you see here we have some wall spaces, some rocks, hexangle spaces. There's a lot of symbols here. All these symbols are abilities. So we build, when we place a building there, an enclosure, so you place one down here, we'll trigger that, we'll gain five income, place a building there. Place a building, say here, across the two symbols, we'll trigger that, get 10 resources, get an extra point token there as well. We can't build here yet because our cards aren't level 2, so that's just a lot of things to look out for. And you can't build on rocks overlapping other areas. And also, after you place your first building, we'll touch a border. You must always connect buildings next to each other. So next, if I put that there, the next building has to at least touch part of that um, tile. It can't go over here. To my left, my sort of ability cues over here. Basically, every time I do one of these little uh, tasks down here, when I've got my card level 2, I can send a marker from there to there, pay the resources and gain one conservation point. It'll cost more and more as the game goes along. And also, every time I do that, I take this over here, gain reward. So you can see here, the top four have a lightning bolt and an income symbol, and the bottom ones have just a lightning bolt symbol. That means that when I do these abilities here, it'll trigger them straight away, and I'll get them again on income turns. This one here means it'll trigger it just once. So for instance, if I do this one here, I'll get five resources. Every income turn, I'll get five resources again. But if I just do this one here, I gain 12 resources and nothing else. 12 money and nothing else. Some more icons here. We have a little point here saying we get plus seven appeal if the map is completely covered. Notice there's a little shortcut here of what you can do. So the blue side, the, the level one side of the uh, build cards has the size comparison for all the uh, enclosures. The level two comparison for the special enclosures. We have symbols here for the partner zoos. So who, if, when we claim these later on in the game, we can get one. Place it down here and gain ability. So, for instance, if I put this one down here, any card I play, this tag. So, we have anything out right now we can use. Yes, we have a cougar. So, if I put this down here, or anyone else board here, it means that when I play a card this tag, it costs me three less of the income. And also, once you play your second one, upgrade a card. Once your association um, card is upgraded to level two, you can get two more. Gain another worker and gain two conversation points. Over here, we have a space, our notepad. Maximum of five of the uh, X tokens. These basically are extra point tokens. I'll explain in a second how these work. Space for our workers, space for our income. We have slots here also for universities. So same with these. When you go over here, you claim one, place it there, extra abilities. So for instance, we have three here. This one gives us more science tags, which will help out sponsor cards later on in the game. This one gives us science tag and plus reputation. And this one gives us reputation and let's have five cards in our hand rather than three. That's pretty good too. We have slots down here, more workers. When we get more workers through certain things, for instance, um, these symbols here for more workers, move the bottom one from there, and you get to the top one, you get two conservation points. So there's all hidden abilities and hidden unlocks and stuff on the board and across the board little shortcuts you can take. Just to the right here is the association board. So these are where the association cards would go. Also, Tash can take. So if your card's level two, you can use this task here, I explained it earlier. But basically, you have four actions. When you send a worker here, so you send a worker here, you'll get the ability. If you want to send a worker to the same spot again the same turn, it'll cost you an extra one. So we, this one here, it's reputation. Get that higher up. This one here, claim a uh, partner zoo. This one here, claim university. And the far right one, place one of your cubes over there on one of the conservation cards. Let's take a look at the Australia one. So for instance, if I play the cheetah, I've already got two in my zoo. So I could get a cube, place it there, to conservation points. If I waited a bit longer though, and got some more of these, I could put it there and get more points. 
So finally, let's discuss the five basic actions of the game, indicated by the cards down here. So as I said before, the cards have a slot, one, two, three, four, and five. And the higher they are on the slot, the more powerful the ability the card does will be. So for instance, place a building with a maximum size of X, two per space. So I currently can only make size three or less buildings. If this is higher up here, I can make buildings of the highest size, five. Once you play a card, you take it up, do the effect, shuffle it down to the bottom, move everything else up. So the card goes to the bottom of the track, other ones go further up. You always start the animal's card at the bottom down here. So let's go for the actions first. So, so obviously all the cards also have double size down here. So the simplest one is build. So to place a building, maximum size X. So let's make a building. Let's basically do a full sort of turn of this, see how it works. So I've got three cards in my hand here. I've got Technology Institute, I've got a common war lizard, and I've got a raccoon. So let's say I want to make the raccoon. It gives me four appeal, gives me quite a few tags up there. Decent card. So let's look at the card overview. So first of all, it needs a size one space or, less, or higher. So if I have one size one space, it's enough to fill for this raccoon. So animals have different things, like this one over here tells me it also needs a size one space, but also needs a space adjacent to a rock. Or it has a special uh, enclosure here. It can also go in a reptile house. So my card's upgraded, like I said earlier, upgrade inside the card, I can then build reptile houses. If I have my zoo somewhere, I could place this in there, it costs no space at all, and class has been inside there. Some animals also, some animals like birds will go in the aviary, and some animals require spaces by water. Also next to the animal is the cost. This costs 11 resources. Some animals also require certain tags in your zoo, so I need more Australia tags to play the emu. And some cards also require level two animal cards to play in the first place. It's gonna be even harder to play. Now the card name down here, the appeal number. So when I play this card, I'll get, instantly get four appeal on the board up there. Also, the bigger the animal, the harder it is to acquire, the more appeal you get. And also the abilities down here. So this one has a boost ability association. As I finish the current action, you may place your association action card on one or five. So essentially, I can play this card, then move that card to the lowest or highest number I wanted to. This is a pretty good thing. We're going to do that first. So I want to place the raccoon. So first of all, I need to build. So I can build one building with maximum size X and pay two per space. Well, I only want to get a one size building for this raccoon. So your first... Um, building has to touch the borders of the park can't be on water can't be on rock so i'm going to place it straight away right here number five and instantly gain five income it's a pretty good start so that goes there they go face down but when you play animal inside them they flip face up to show they're occupied with an animal so currently that's just there play it down there it cost me two there we go move that down if I was playing properly solo, the solo player card would move across like this to indicate one of the actions has been taken. Let's do another action. Let's look at the association. So for one association task, a maximum value of X. So tax down here, I haven't got level two, so I can't do this just yet. So can I either increase the reputation of my zoo by two or claim one of these partner zoos down here? This lets me pay less for certain tags of animals. I can't quite get this yet, universities, I can't quite do this yet, but I don't need to anyway because it's a bit too early in the game. So if I want to play a raccoon, ideally I could get that symbol down there. So if I do this, association task, so I'm going to take my one remaining worker, place it here, because it's three, three matches. I'm going to take this over here, place it at my bottommost one. So now when I play a raccoon, later on, it's going to cost me three less. That's pretty good. So go there. Let's look at the uh, animals card. So you see down here, play animals from your hand. If it's a number one, I could play any. Between two and four, I could play one animal. If it was at five, I could play two, as long as I can afford it, obviously. The other side, obviously, is stronger. I can play an animal uh, number one. If it was at three or four, I could play two. If it was at five, I could play two. And also, when I do this action, I gain one reputation on my zoo. And not only can I play animals from my hand, I can play animals from reputation range. So the third of this is these acts of extension of my hand. So if this was at, say, four, and I had a level two, I could play anything from my hand or anything up to the here on the board. So we're going to do this, we're going to play animal. So we do this, I'm going to play a raccoon. First four check for the space. We have, no tags required, we're okay. Uh, it costs 11, minus three off this, it costs eight. So it's a nice cheap raccoon we played. There we go. We get the raccoon, we place it face up in our area. We'll gain four on here, one, two, three, four. 
And now we're going to basically put association task card. Let's put that right up to the top up here. So this goes to the bottom. That goes up to the top. There we go. And also stay face up like this. When you play more, put them on top. But you only need to have the icon showing. Because now in my zoo I have a predator icon, a reptile icon, a sort of bear icon, and two of these uh, different constant symbols down here as well. So it's better for me. So let's do the break action. So I'm going to break. In solo player, break doesn't make a difference, but essentially lets you basically draw cards. So depending on how up it is on the chart, you can draw more cards. So if it's number five, I can draw three cards, discard one, or snap, basically gain any card I want from this board, regardless of where reputation is. So the high, if this is higher, it's good for us. And last um, task is uh, sponsors. So this is number five, I can play a sponsor card. Sponsor cards are the blue cards here. These, like your animals, go face up in your zoo, check for the tags first. Some require tags to play. No tags, it's fine, doesn't cost anything, as long as my reputation's high enough. So you see here, that's a little brown symbol there, telling me that it does have an extra um, ability at the bottom down here. So on the income, I gain one X token, so that's a reminder there for me. But also has a nice end game. End games are sort of brown down here, like bold brown. End of the game, if I have full three universities down here, I get one conservation point. And last, let's just go through the uh, association board. So that's for the action down here. Say it was at five. I say it was upgraded, actually. I could basically, for one action, so I could do anything on here. I could place it there, increase this by two. I've got more cards. If I've got a number five, I could upgrade another card, the upgrade card symbol. If I place it over here, as you saw before, I gain another partner zoo. Place it here, I gain a university. Gain another one, I gain an upgraded card, another one, conservation points. And lastly, if I put it down here, I can make a commitment to the conservation cards down here. So you see down here, I have tags in my zoos. I don't have any of these yet. I've got no Australia, no Asia or Europe. If I played this though, I'd have one so far. If I had two of these, I could put that there, put my cube over there, get more abilities and get more points. And also I could put a cube over here onto here, donate money, conservation, which is great in a late game for getting more conservation points, getting more score. And that's it for the game. When you when this goes past reputation, trigger pull your end game scoring, check your end game scoring cards. And then if your score is higher than negative, you've won. And that is it for the basic overview of Art Nova. Okay, on to the review. My first point is the theme. So how is the theme for this game? The game's theme is simple. Build your own zoo. And this is a theme that's really accessible to everyone. People love animals. I mean, I love animals. I love strategy games. And it feels like you're basically combining the old strategy games with the computers like Zoo Tycoon in a really fun, accessible board game for everyone to play. For me personally, I love the theme of this game. Having animals um, in, a, in a game, like a zoo, build your own zoo. I love going to the zoo, I love animals, I love board games. So combining together is perfect. It's a match made in heaven for me. I feel some games are a little hard to sort of grasp. It's hard to take at first. I mean, sci-fi games and war games and horror games are a lot harder to get to the table. The people get put off by them a little bit. They see the box and think, oh no, I don't, I don't want to get into this. Like, I don't like the idea of this. But building a zoo, full of animals, all different types, you know, lions, elephants, monkeys, reptiles, birds, all sorts are in here. It's such a nice, successful theme to everyone to play. The game also makes sense because the bigger the animal, the more space it needs, the bigger enclosure it needs. You can put birds in an aviary, you can put reptiles in a reptile house. The also, the bigger the animal, what it's going to cost, but the more appeal it's going to generate. So the more appeal it generates, the more excitement level your zoo has. The more appeal you get, the more resources you get at the end of the turn. Also, the more reputation you increase for your zoo, the more abilities you unlock, the more popular your zoo becomes, the better things you can have in your zoo. So if you've got a zoo that's really popular, you have more workers, more abilities, more income, more actions of you available. It makes sense because the more your zoo expands and becomes more popular and generates more income, the more abilities and more cards and more animals become available to you throughout the game. So the price of this game, this game is priced at around £60 roughly, so it's kind of hitting the high end of board game prices. I kind of put medium price, about £40-£50. This is sort of the high end market, so watch out for that. But just bring on to our next point, the quality of the components as well. So the box itself is sturdy, it's very thick, very durable. Uh, the boards are quite good quality, there's plenty of cars and they're all nice, they're good to shuffle, they don't bend easily, they aren't too th flimsy, they aren't too thin, they feel nice, there's good quality when you shuffle them. There's wooden tokens too, so that's great quality there, I love wooden tokens, they tend to last longer, they don't chip as easily. The game also comes with inserts, it has its own plastic inserts for the game, everything fits in nice, there's lots, plenty of space, everything fits in nice and neat. I do love that though, the game has an insert, that's a great addition to a game, all games should have inserts like this. I mean it's not perfect. Could be a little bit better, could be better for the space for the cards as well, because the cards are a bit sort of lost in there a little bit. But for all the tokens in the game, it is such a good addition, it's such a great thing. Developers should take notes, inserts like this are well worth the money.
Of the price, the wooden markers, the hundreds of cars, the inserts, the great quality components, it is great value for money. Next point is artwork. So there's plenty of nice details on the board, very vibrant, very colourful. Tokens of good quality, nice here, clear iconography, plenty of icons and everything's listed nice for you to see. I do like how all the icons and shortcuts and symbols were laid out nice and clear for you to see, the little arrows. So there's lots of tips for the actions too. But aside from that though, there's no other artwork for the game, it's all actual real HD quality photos of animals, locations, um, characters, buildings and stuff. But I do really like this, so it feels nice, it actually feels more like mature. It feels like a mature game because the animals are real pictures, they're not like cartoons or caricatures of animals. It's real pictures of elephants and tigers and lions and bears, they're all real. So when you're playing the cards, it feels like the animal's actually there in your, in your zoo. It feels like a real picture of an animal. And when you see your zoo towards the end of the game, you see the animals next to it, it feels like the animal's actually there, which I do I do really like that. And the photos of the animals are great too. Great quality photographs. All the animals look great. I mean, even locations like Sahara Desert and rainforests, um, national parks, all look fantastic. It makes the game really pop from the table and give it great tail presence. The next point is the learning category. So how is this game to learn? What's the rule book like? The rulebook is surprisingly quite good, it's not too big, not too thick, it flows quite nice, it's written quite clear. Plenty of examples, plenty of um, actions and abilities in bold keywords, so it's very easy to follow. It's written quite well. You'll find detailed versions of actions and later pages too, so you have the brief overview at the start and detailed versions later. There's also glossaries at the back and a shortcut reference sheet for the keywords in the game too. There's also a little guidebook that tells you what some of the cards mean in detail. So some sponsorship cards are quite confusing with all the symbols on. They have a small number in the corner. And they have a little guidebook at the side, so a little quick look up. You can basically get a number of this card down here, look it up and go, yeah, that means that, that, that. So it's like a little clarification thing there. So it really makes the game flow faster. You're going to go online all the time and look up the forum. What does this card mean? What does this actually do? The symbols are right there and there's a guide at the back of the book. The symbols are great too because the appeal has a little brown sort of ticket thing around it. The reputation is a sort of green shield. Um, income is like a sort of blue background. Uh, a lightning bolt symbol means an instant activated ability. A brown symbol means an income ability. So, so once you learn what some of the icons mean, the game will flow fast and you get the rules down really quick. On to my weight of the game. So I don't mean actual weight of the game, even though the game does weigh quite a bit, it's quite actually physically heavy. I mean complexity. So is this game quite complex? And I will say the game is quite complex. It's not an easy game to learn. And I don't mean it's hard. It's not the most difficult game to learn ever. I do think Guy Project, from the same developer, is a lot harder than this. Um, it's not too bad. It's just a lot of components, a lot of boards and cars and tokens. It looks intimidating. It looks quite scary at first because there's a lot going on at once. And first impressions of this game are probably quite intimidating. Younger players may struggle with this game because despite its cute theme and the animals building the park and the zoo, it is quite complex. There's a lot of actions, a lot of keywords and abilities and symbols. But I wouldn't say it's super complex. Um, young kids will struggle, but if you've got a kid, some kids who know some games and have got a little bit of experience, they will get a hang of this quite easy. This is because of the action cards being quite simple. The bold keywords and the icons all clearly laid out for you. And once you realise that everything you need to know is all on the board in front of you, all the icons are right there, all the icons mean what they mean. So if you see a symbol and an arrow or a brown arrow or a yellow lightning bolt, you know instantly that means to do this and this. So like I said before, a previous point, learn the symbols, make this game less complex. But don't go into this game thinking it's going to be a breeze to play because it can be a little bit tricky. But luckily for you, the rules are quite clear. My next point is luck versus strategy. So is this game more centred towards luck? or strategy. It's a little bit of both, but it does lean heavily more towards the strategy side. There's a bit of luck because there's card drafting. There's a huge, huge deck of, I think it's 200 cards in there, of animals and sponsor cards. And they're going to be drafting and taken off, and then players are going to steal them from you as well, so there is a bit of luck there as well. Also, the association um, cards and the sponsorship cards and the end game scoring cards are randomised too, so there's a bit of luck there what you get as well, because you might start off with a certain strategy you think, right, I've got the Africa symbol, I'm going to go for that card down there, get Africa animals, I'm playing to my zoo, then some might take the card you want, so it might get lost, and then you, so all of a sudden the, the strategy has to change a little bit, so the luck is there, but there's a lot of strategy in this game, because of all the animals and the tags, um, and the gameplay options you can take, I mean, you can do so many things this game, you can play animals early on, you can make, you can put buildings down faster, you could try to get workers faster, increase your appeal, get more income, you could basically reputation higher, you could go for association uh, tasks, you could go sponsorship cards and focus on getting certain tags. So there's a lot of strategy because of all the symbols and how the game works. It does feel like terraforming Mars where 
you have a lot of options to do in your turn. And everything you do will progress the game. Everything you do will progress your points, your score, your income. But if you're if, but if you've got a keen eye and you can look after the symbols and the certain tags and the certain bonus cards, you'll get points a lot faster. So so fans of really deep strategy games will have great fun here. The next point is interaction. So how much interaction between players is in this game? Surprisingly, it's quite a bit. For a game about just building a zoo, it's actually got quite an interaction. It's not just because of taking cards from players that they might need uh, and taking slots, association tasks that they might want to use first. Because of the ability in the card. I mean, cards do things like take cards from players or draw cards they want or take things that someone else. But the Venom cards have abilities too. You put Venom servers on players and they'll do certain things and they'll affect things. They might, it might do something like take one of the cards from their slot and push it down to the bottom end completely mess up their game, changing their plans. Because they've got their card they want quite high for their next turn. You put that token there, do a certain ability, go back onto the bottom, change the game, change how they play. So despite the game being quite a sort of solo experience of just doing your own thing, you can acquire interaction. This is because of the cards themselves and the great abilities. There's so many abilities in the cards. It's like Wingspan. It's like a mixture of Wingspan and Magic the Gathering. You know, it's like dipping and like sprinting and pilfer, like two, three, you know, different things, like drawing cards and moving things in different quantities and variations. And so many abilities you can choose from. And because there's so many cards, you're going to see so many abilities throughout your game, especially with four players. You know, so many abilities going back and forth, thinking, what's that ability do? What's that do? Oh, I'm not. No. You'll see something, thinking, oh, I wish I played that. Oh, I know an ability. That's really cool. You know, you'll see a lot of things in there. So, play interaction is quite a good amount for a game like this. Next point is setup time. So, how fast is the game set up? It's actually not that bad. Despite it's been hundreds of tokens, hundreds of cards, the player markers, the player boards, the main board, the research board. It's not bad. This is because of the great insert the game comes with. It sets up time super quick, by about 10 minutes tops. As you saw in my previous video, you just get the two boards out, fill it with cards, the association cards, get your player board, your markers, draft a few cards to start off with, and that's pretty much it. You start an income, you can go. So it's really fast, and I do appreciate that this game. Again, this big and this epic and stunning things inside, but because of the great quality insert and how the game plays, Setup time is super, super quick. The next point is time between turns. So how much time is it between your turn and a player's turn? Does it go quite fast? Luckily, it does go really quick because like Terraforming Mars, you have one main action you do per turn. You play one card, do its ability, slide down, and then pass. And when you do your income uh, section, when you do the break, everyone sort of does it together, and it's not that long really. So I do like that a lot. It reminds me of Civilization 2, Civilization New Dawn, the sliding cards. That makes a game like that, such a big, epic, open game, play really quickly. And that is crucial to making this game enjoyable. Because games like this, where there's a lot going on at once, it can feel like your turn takes a long time to come round. But luckily for Art Nova, it's really fast and it's really fun. It plays very quickly. Okay, so length of the game, it is on the long side. But it feels enough. It's an overstate, it's welcome. For two players, pretty good at the game, looking about an hour and a half tops. For four players, probably about three hours or maybe four hours, roughly, give or take. It depends, but it doesn't ever feel too long. It doesn't feel too short, it doesn't feel too long. It feels like it's just enough time. Experienced players who know how to play the game and get appeal faster and trigger the end game point quicker, have a quick game, a more tense, more brutal game. Newer players will make the game last longer because they're playing cards slower, they're playing simpler kind of actions, they don't know what they're kind of doing so the game will last longer. It's good for them too because it gives them more time to get used to the cards and the symbols and how the game will function. I do like how the game ends though, there's no actual round marker, there's no like after so many rounds just quit, so you aren't constantly rushing. The game ends when the certain ending condition is triggered, when the appeal marker passes reputation marker. At that point you have one last turn and the game ends, so you have plenty of time because those two markers start very far apart on the opposite ends of the board. It's a very long time to creep across Across over, so you have a lot of time. Plus, you can look across and see who's getting close to that point anyway. So you've got time to plan out. So length of the game is on the long side, but it feels enough. So the next point is replay value. So how replayable is this game? I gotta say it's really high. This is because of just the sheer number of animal cards in this game. There's about 200. There's so many. When you put a stack down of cards, it's just so high. You're never gonna see the same cards twice in about 20, 30 games, I reckon. Just that many. And all the cards are useful. They aren't just like good cards. I mean, yeah, there's some like weaker animals, like some plain looking birds that would be a bit you know, simple, a bit easier to play. But they all have abilities, they all do unique things. They'll draw cards, they'll change actions, they'll give you resources, they'll trigger certain abilities, they'll gain more appeal. 
all the cards do certain things. And plus, the sponsor cards too feel like Terraforming Mars blue cards, where you sort of play them, they sit there, and they'll trigger certain abilities later on in the game, they'll give you income and trigger certain things later on. And because of this and the gameplay variations, the replay value is really high. Like I said before, you can go for the appeal quite fast, you can play like animals quite quickly, you can go for sponsorship cards quite quickly, you can go for certain tags, you can go for certain um, workers and make the research board bigger, you can go for reputation, get your, try and lock some extra abilities quicker, get more level 2 cards and level 1 cards. There's so much variety in gameplay depth. And once you play a game, you'll finish it and think, oh, I should have done that that time. When I play it again, I'll do this. When I play it again, I'll go for that one. So the game's replay value is really high. So next point is solo. How is this game to play for a solo player? It's actually really, really good. Much like Gaia Project, it has an excellent solo mode. There is no player board or ultimate sort of cards. There's just one little AI board. And basically, every time you take a turn, you have a cube across. When all the cubes have gone, Place their cube on the leftmost space, reputation track on the association board, trigger a break so you get your resources, draw your cards and so forth, trigger your abilities, then go again. It lasts about six rounds and it just feels just enough. It's like Terraforming Mars, like the 14 turns thing. Like I say, you, you, can't, you do have to rush a little bit, you can't take your time and sit back. It is time it. But like Terraforming Mars and suppose like Wingspan, it forced you to think quicker and think, right, I know what to do this time, how do I get appeal? Faster, reputation, quicker, triggerability, more. It forces you to think of strategies quickly and adapt your gameplay on the fly. It'll make playing this game solo will make when you play it in multiplayer, you'll bring across the things you've learned solo, the abilities, the techniques, the synergies and the combos of certain cards into multiplayer. So a game for solo is an excellent purchase. So getting the game for so getting this game for solo is an excellent purchase. Obviously it's better with more players, like a lot of games are, but it's certainly fun as a solo game. So my summary for Art Nova. I set the bar for this game really high. Meditations were through the roof. Um, I probably I was thinking when I got the game, okay, I put my bar too high. It's going to be good, but not that that good. But it is that good. It is it is amazing. It's a really crunchy, complex, involved Euro game with tons of replay value, tons of cards, tons of gameplay options, uh, just tons of things to do. It. And I love games like this. I love games where there's just so many things going on at once, so many paths to take, so many actions. It's not just linear. It's not just like, we just do this, we just play this kind of card, and then you just get your game, your game score, and you win. There's so many ways to play. All the animals, all the card abilities, much like Wingspan, there's so many things to use on the cards, so many synergies and combinations. This is a sort of near-perfect game. The only downside I can think of is it's a little bit complex. And the only other thing I think of as well is when I play animals in my zoo, I don't actually feel like they're there. I feel like I'm just flipping a card over, flipping a towel over, and that's it. They don't feel like they're played there. When you play special enclosure, like a bird aviary or a reptile house, you put a cube there to indicate that animal is there. But it doesn't feel like it's there. It's one little nitpick I can think of. And I don't understand why, from a development choice, you couldn't have tokens or cards or little figures of the animals. It'd be too much money, it costs so much, and it just made the game so big. But apart from that, though, this is a beautiful complex, big Euro game, accessible theme, fun gameplay, and my final score for Art Nova is an A, with a gold stamp of approval. And that's it for my review of Art Nova, I look forward to a solo playthrough session for this game soon. Any comments or questions about this game you've seen, a comment down below, and as always, like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.